guys, I'm back with the second video of the video series on how do organisms reproduce class 10 science. And in today's video, we are going to learn about asexual reproduction, where we will discuss about different modes of asexual reproduction like budding, fragmentation, regeneration, binary fission, multiple fission and so on. So do not go anywhere and stay with me. Let's get started. Asexual reproduction. Single parent is needed to produce the new organism. That means you do not need two parents. Like for example in human beings, we need a father as well as a mother to produce a new baby. Right? So that means we need two parents. But in asexual reproduction, we just need one parent to produce the new organism. That means if there is one organism, that single organism is able to give birth to a new organism that is called asexual reproduction. So that is why in asexual reproduction there is no sex differentiation of male and female unlike human beings. In human beings we have males and females separate. Why? Because we need one male and one female to reproduce. But in this case we just need one organism. So there is no distinction of there is no concept of male female. No sex involved. So what do I mean by no sex involved? That means there is no need of mating between the two different sexes. Because as I said, there is no differentiation of male female here. So obviously when there is no, when only one organism is involved, obviously there is no concept of mating also. Right? Now this asexual reproduction was the primitive mode of reproduction. That means it was, it came before the sexual mode of reproduction. Now, in this uh, mode, the daughter is exactly identical to the parents. Now, we often use the word daughter for the new organism which is produced. So, the new organism which is produced is often called daughter and the organism which gave birth to the new organism is referred as the parent organism. Right? So, maybe many a times while teaching, I'll be using these terms daughter and parents. So, take it in this regard. So in asexual reproduction, there is no chance of variation because in this case, only one organism gives birth to the new organism. So whatever this organism has, exactly same thing gets copied. So there is no chance of having some new traits. So the daughter is exactly identical to the parents and there is no scope of variation as such. This asexual reproduction is commonly seen in lower plants and animals. That means mostly it is seen in all unicellular animals like the bacteria, amoeba, uh, paramecium, euglena and also some simple multicellular animals like hydra, planaria, tapeworms. So there also we can see asexual mode of reproduction. We also see it in some plants like rose, potato, onion. So, there are a couple of living organisms where asexual reproduction is present. Now, there are some organisms who can reproduce both asexually as well as sexually. So, they are capable of doing both. A single parent can also produce organism, but at the same time, they also have male-female organisms so that they can mate and they can produce new organism. So, on the other hand, what is sexual reproduction as the sum as the word itself says that here sex is involved. That means there is sex differentiation, one male, one female. So it involves two parents. Fusion of male and female gametes give rise to the new organism. So here you have a new term called gametes. What are gametes? Gametes are nothing but these are specialized sex cells which are capable of reproduction. So that means they are some, like our body is made up of cells. Now there are some cells which are specialized for reproduction. So that means those cells are only used for reproduction. Like as you know, in our body, the cells are specialized to form tissues. They do a specific function. Again, the tissues together becomes an organ. They do a specific function. So similarly, like there are certain cells which are involved in the digestive system. There are certain cells which are involved in the excretory system. So similarly, there are some specialized cells which are involved for reproduction. 
so these gametes are nothing but they are specialized cells for sex so here in case of sexual reproduction a male sex cell and a female sex cell they both fuse together that means they both join together to form the new organism so that means the joining between male and female that is sex is involved in this mode of reproduction so as i said sex is involved there so since here everything happens by the combination of two parents so the daughter is genetically different from the parents that means the daughter is not going to be exactly similar to the parents because we have two parents right one is, so those two parents themselves have different traits right so when they both combine to form a new organism it is quite obvious that the new organism is not going to be exactly similar to any one of them so the new organism will have traits from both of them and they will also have some new traits so that means in this case the organism is going to be genetically different from the traits parents some traits will be similar to either of the parents there will be some new traits as well and that is called variations so variations play a role in sexual reproduction but in case of sexual reproduction the multiplication rate is slow it is not very fast when compared to asexual reproduction so asexual reproduction is a faster mode of reproduction when compared to sexual mode so this was a brief description of both the modes of reproduction so we will now discuss about the asexual reproduction in detail what is asexual reproduction mode of reproduction in which new individuals are formed from a single parent right i just now discussed new individuals are identical to the parent because here there is no scope of variations no new characters are observed in the new organism it is a faster mode of reproduction it happens very quickly so now you will see how quick it happens when when i start taking the different types of when i start taking examples of different types of asexual reproduction you will actually see that how fast it happens there are sometimes it also happens that in a very small period of time a lot of new organisms are produced a lot of new individuals are formed so it is definitely a faster mode of reproduction so some of the organisms where asexual mode of reproduction actually happens is bacteria amoeba euglena these are some of the unicellular organisms there are some other lower animals like the hydra planaria tapeworms so we have talked about all these organisms in our class 9 right in diversity in living organisms lesson so there i have spoken about each of these organisms so you you must be familiar with these names by now so these are some of the organisms uh, where we find asexual mode so not only in animals but also in plants like rose onion potato here also we see that asexual mode of reproduction is prevalent let us now look at the different types of asexual reproduction so even this type of reproduction also happens in many different ways that means new organisms can be formed from the parent organism from a single parent in many different ways now depending on how the new organism is getting produced so the this reproduction has been divided into several types so they are fission budding regeneration fragmentation spore formation and vegetative propagation so these are the six different types of asexual reproduction so we will discuss about each of them in detail one by one and we will also take examples and see how actually each of these processes take place so let us start with fission now what does the word fission means fission means splitting so when something gets splitted something breaks that is called fission so what is this fission actually it is a mode of asexual reproduction where an organism splits to form two or more new individuals very simple right so the parent organism will split and it will form new organisms so it is so very simple to produce new organisms here right so where do we see these kind of uh, mode of asexual reproduction we see it generally in the very simple organisms like the unicellular organisms right 
Now in this fission also, we have two types of fission. One is binary fission and the other one is multiple fission. So I am sure with the name only you can guess what are they. The word binary, binary means two, right? The word binary means two and the word multiple means many. So in binary fission, the organism splits to form two new individuals and in multiple fission, the organism splits to form many new individuals, right? Now this splitting can occur in a variety of ways. That means the, how the organism will split, that is the question now. So whether it will split along a specific plane or it will split just anywhere. So how will it split? Now see there are many possibilities. Some organisms split along any plane. Some other organisms split only along a specific plane. Some will split into two parts, some will split into many parts. So it, it again depends. So let us discuss binary fission and multiple fission separately. So let us start with binary fission. So here two new individuals are formed. As I said, the word binary means two. So the organism will split into two equal halves. Here nucleus divides only once. So how the splitting will take place? We will just see. It happens in unicellular organisms like amoeba, paramecium, euglena and bacteria. So mostly the unicellular organisms, they undergo fission. So these are the organisms, bacteria, amoeba, euglena. Now let us look at the binary fission of an amoeba in detail. So this picture actually shows the detailed process of binary fission. So this was the amoeba, original amoeba. So when it has to produce new organism, what happens? It, it gets flattened. If you look at, this is the nucleus of the amoeba, right? So this is the nucleus. The nucleus is flattened here. Gradually, the nucleus divides into two. So two nucleus. Now after the nucleus divides, the cytoplasm also divides because a nucleus alone cannot survive, right? The nucleus needs the entire cellular apparatus, it needs the cytoplasm, it needs the organelles. So after the nucleus divides into two, the cytoplasm also divides and finally it splits into two daughter organisms. So two amoeba are formed, right? So here, how did the splitting happen? Here, the splitting just happened along any plane. So there was no specific plane along which the amoeba was split. The amoeba gets split along any plane, right? So here, one another important thing to notice here is that once the fission has happened, the parent do not exist anymore because the parent itself broke into two parts, right? So one of these daughter organisms is actually the parent. The parent itself broke. So once the fission is done, the parent finishes because parent itself breaks to form the daughters. And how many times the nucleus divided itself? Just once. So this was the step where the nucleus divided. So that's why it was told that the nucleus divides only once, right? And this kind of fission happens under favorable conditions. It is not that the amoeba will, uh, I mean, when will the amoeba decide to undergo binary fission? So when the conditions are favorable. So under that condition, it will get splitted. Now, other than amoeba, there are other organisms also where splitting happens along a specific plane. Like as an amoeba, I told you that the fission, the fission or the splitting can happen along any plane. But let us look at another example of Lishmania. So let us look at Lishmania. This is how it looks. Lishmania structure is a little similar to Euglena where it has a whip-like structure. So this is the whip-like structure. This is Lishmania. What is Lishmania actually? It is a protozoa which is responsible for causing the disease Kalazar. Right? So I think now you are reminded of what it is. Now, if you look at this Lishmania, this also undergoes binary fission. But in this case, the fission always happens along a specific plane. And what is that plane? It always happens along a longitudinal plane relative to the whip-like structure. 
So this tail like structure which you see this is known as the whip. So this relative to this plane which is the longitudinal plane this is the longitudinal plane. So that is why if you see here how the fission is happening the nucleus divided into two parts in this fashion. So now it will get separated into two different organisms. So this will be one organism and this will be another organism. Right? So in case of certain organisms, the binary fusion happens along a specific plane. Whereas in case of certain other organisms like amoeba, the fusion can happen along any plane. So binary fusion is clear now? Okay. Let us look at multiple fusion. Now the concept still remains the same. Just that in this case, the number of organisms which are produced are many. So here many new individuals are formed. Nucleus divides repeatedly, not just once, because when the nucleus divides once, how many nucleus will be formed? Two nuclei will be formed. Now, when the nuclei keeps on dividing again and again, how many nuclei will be formed? Many nuclei will be formed, right? So, in multiple fission, the nucleus keeps on dividing repeatedly, and that is why many organisms are formed. It takes place under unfavorable conditions. So this is an important difference between binary fission and multiple fission. Binary fission happens under favorable condition whenever that organism wants. But in case of multiple fission, it happens during the unfavorable conditions. That means when the conditions or when the environmental conditions around that organism is not good, what happens? For protection against the unfavorable conditions, a covering is formed outside that organism and that covering is known as cyst. So what is cyst? It is nothing but a protective covering to save the organism from unfavorable condition and inside the cyst the nucleus keeps on dividing so many times. Therefore inside the cyst many nuclei are formed. Now when the unfavorable conditions go and the favorable conditions come back this protective covering the cyst breaks and when the cyst breaks all the nuclei which are present inside the cyst they come out and as a result many daughter organisms are formed. So it happens in organisms like amoeba, plasmodium, in many algae as well. So you see amoeba undergoes binary fission as well, amoeba undergoes multiple fission also. So in favorable conditions it undergoes binary fission, under unfavorable conditions it undergoes multiple fission. What is plasmodium? It is the parasite which is responsible for the disease malaria, right? So here you can see the plasmodium parasite. This is how they look like. So let us understand the process even more clearly taking example of plasmodium. Let us suppose if this is a plasmodium, okay? So this is how it is in favorable conditions, right? Now when unfavorable conditions come, a protective covering is formed around the plasmodium. This protective covering is known as the cyst, right? Now inside this cyst, the nucleus keeps dividing many number of times. As a result, earlier there was just one nucleus, now there are so many nuclei inside. So as long as, so greater the amount of time for which the unfavorable conditions persist, more is the number of nuclei which are formed inside. Because as long as the cyst is formed, the inside the nucleus keeps on dividing so more and more nuclei are formed. Now once the unfavorable conditions go and the favorable conditions return what will happen? This protective covering will break so the cyst will break and all these nuclei will be released. Now each of these nuclei along with the cytoplasm will form the form a new plasmodium. So from one plasmodium, you started with one plasmodium and you got so many plasmodium, right? So this is the concept of multiple fission. So now if I ask you, is there any difference between binary fission and multiple fission? Majorly there are two differences. First is in binary fission, two new individuals are formed. In multiple fission, many new individuals are formed. Second is, in binary fission, it happens under favorable conditions. Multiple fission happens under unfavorable conditions. 
so that was all about fission let us now discuss the next type of asexual reproduction that is budding what is budding the word budding is derived from the word bud so let us see what it is here a new individual is formed as an outgrowth of parent that means on the parent's body itself there will be some outgrowth at a specific part of the body that outgrowth is known as bud and that is why this process is called budding so that outgrowth will gradually grow and it will become a new individual so this is how this reproduction takes place so here the daughter separates away and parent continues to exist like in case of fission what was happening after the fission was actually taking place the parent was dying because the parent itself was breaking to form the new organisms but in this case even after the daughter organism is formed the daughter will also exist the parent will also exist right so that means on the parent body there will be a small outgrowth which we call as bud that bud will grow when it becomes mature it will separate from the parent's body so let us look at the organisms where we actually find this kind of reproduction it is generally seen in organisms like hydra and yeast <clears throat> so see how it happens here so this is the hydra so here if you see at this location there is a small outgrowth now the question is can this outgrowth happen anywhere in the body can this outgrowth happen everywhere on the body of hydra no this bud or this outgrowth is the result of repeated cell division so there are some specific areas where the cells have the capacity to divide where the cells have capacity to form new cells right as i told before also that in multicellular organisms there are a certain set of cells which are specialized to grow or which are specialized to divide which are specialized to form new cells so even in case of hydra there are certain locations or there are some specific sites where repeated cell divisions can occur so at those sites this small outgrowth is seen and this outgrowth is termed as bud so if you see this outgrowth gradually grows and it grows to the extent of a hydra it grows to become another hydra now when it becomes completely matured it will break off from the parent organism so the, as a result the parent will also be alive and the daughter will also be alive right so birds are the small individuals which will gradually grow become mature and after becoming mature they will detach from the parent organism so it is not only seen in hydra it is also seen in yeast so if you look at the yeast here in this picture see these are the yeast this is the yeast but if you look at this yeast you see there is a small outgrowth on this yeast so here also this outgrowth will mature and it will separate out from the yeast sometimes it is also seen that the outgrowth becomes quite matured and before it could detach itself from the parent organism before that only another outgrowth is seen on this outgrowth also somewhat like this so by the time it actually detaches itself from the parent body it itself has an outgrowth on its body right so this process is known as budding let us talk about fragmentation now so let's see what it is it is derived from the word fragment here the parent breaks into multiple pieces on maturity each of which gives rise to a new individual okay so the parent will break itself into many pieces so each piece piece is nothing but a fragment so since the parent breaks itself into many fragments that is why this process is called fragmentation so nobody will actually break the organism that that is how the life cycle is as soon as the organism will become matured it will break itself into many pieces and each of those separate pieces will then grow to form a new individual it is quite surprising right because that doesn't happen in our day to day life we see things breaking means it is gone but there are certain things which are capable of regenerating itself right so similarly here also in fragmentation also the same thing happens this fragmentation is not it is seen only in simple multicellular organisms like 
uh, spirogyra which is a green algae and falls under the plantae kingdom right so it is only possible in simple multicellular organisms if you might think that okay then if, if it is a, such an easy process so why doesn't even human beings reproduce like this that uh, as soon as a human being grows up to become an adult that uh, human being breaks himself into different pieces and each of the pieces uh, regenerate to form a new human being things would have been so funny and so easy right but it is not like that and why is it not like that because this kind of process is not possible for all multicellular organisms whenever we talk of complex or advanced multicellular organisms we talk of cells we talk of collection of cells to form tissues to form some specialized function we talk of tissues joining together to form organs and each organ performing a specific function again we talk of organs combining together to form the organ systems so that means if cell by cell division happens in these in simple multicellular organisms what happens is that whenever the organism breaks into say four parts each of those four parts how will they form the new organism they they will keep on the cells will keep on dividing so just by repeated number of cell divisions the entire organism will be formed so that is possible because these simple multicellular organisms are just collection of cells here the cells are not specialized to form tissues or tissues are not specialized to form organs but in complex multicellular organisms even if you break the organism into three or four parts each part will not be able to form the cells which are present in the other part for example there are some cells in our body which are specialized for digestion there are some cells which are specialized for respiration there are some cells which are specialized for reproduction so if you break the body into three or four parts each of those part will not be able to uh, the cells of that part will divide and will form cells only of that type it will not be able to form cells which are specialized to do some other function okay right? so that is why cell by cell division is not possible for all multicellular organisms but in case of the very simple multicellular organisms like here the example which we have taken here is of spirogyra so this is how spirogyra looks like right now what it does when it becomes mature it divides itself into different parts and each of these parts then become a new spirogyra altogether so see it divided itself into three parts and each of these parts regenerated to form the entire organism so from one spirogyra we got three new spirogyra so this is known as fragmentation because here the organism breaks itself into many fragments which give rise to new individuals that is why it is called fragmentation next one is regeneration the fragmentation and regeneration many people get confused between these two many of them think that both are exactly the same however they they have a lot, these two processes have lot of similarity amongst themselves but they are not exactly similar so we will see how what is regeneration a parent if cut or broken into multiple pieces each gives rise to a new individual so here also if a parent is broken into many pieces each of those pieces will give rise to a new individual now do you see any difference between fragmentation and regeneration in fragmentation this breaking up happens on its own as soon as the organism becomes mature it breaks itself into many pieces but in case of regeneration the organism doesn't break itself if by any chance it gets broken into multiple pieces it has the capability to regenerate its parts so that is why regeneration is said to be an accidental process that means the organism doesn't do it on its own but if accidentally it gets broken or it gets cut into multiple pieces each of those pieces will give rise to a new organism because so the similarity between fragmentation and regeneration is that in both the processes the broken pieces have the capability to form the new organism by cell divisions and the difference is that fragmentation happens as soon as the organism becomes mature it breaks on its own 
In regeneration, the organism doesn't break on its own. If accidentally it gets broken into pieces, then this process of regeneration happens. So we can say that this process of regeneration is not the same as reproduction because when I talk of reproduction, it is something which is under the will of an organism. An organism will know when it wants to reproduce, right? But the kind of process regeneration is, it is an accidental process and an organism can, cannot wait to be cut to reproduce. That means any organism cannot only depend on this process of regeneration to reproduce. Because what if that organism never gets cut or it never gets broken? In that case, it will never reproduce. So this regeneration is just one type of uh, reproduction. This reproduction is, I mean, there is no such organism which only depends on regeneration for its reproduction. So this happens by some specialized cells that have capability to develop into different body parts. So this development of each part of the body into the entire uh, organism is known as development. So this is seen in organisms like hydra, flatworms, tapeworms. But again, I'm mentioning it once again, that that doesn't mean that these organisms depends only on regeneration for their reproduction. They also have other ways of reproducing. For example, in case of hydra, just now we talked about budding, right? So hydra can reproduce by budding, it can reproduce by regeneration as well, right? So how this regeneration happens? Here we have taken the example of planaria, which is a flat worm. So I'm sure these are no more new names to you. We have discussed all these things in your class 9, diversity in living organisms. In case you want to get an idea about them, please refer that video. So here you can see if somebody cuts this planaria into pieces, into three parts. Now each of these pieces will gradually grow the other parts as well. That's because each of these parts are made up of specialized cells that have capability to develop into different body parts. So here you can see this middle part of the body was capable of forming even the head and the tail. The tail was capable of forming the head as well as the neck. The head was capable of forming the middle part as well as the tail, right? So this is again a, a different type of asexual reproduction because even at the end of it, at, at the end of the process, we are getting three new organisms. We, we are getting three new planarias, right? So this is regeneration. So I'm sure you are no more confused between fragmentation and regeneration because many people actually do. Many people even say that regeneration and fragmentation are exactly the same thing. I I'm sure they are similar, but that no, they are not exactly the same. So let us look at the next type that is spore formation. So here formation of new individual happens by germination of spores. So we have a new term here that is Spores. So let us first try to understand what, uh, what are spores. Spores are unicellular bodies in the parent that are capable of growing into a new individual. So these are small bodies which are present in the body of the parent organism. Let us take an example. Have you ever observed the molds formed on a rotten object? For example, here in this picture you can see a rotten tomato over which molds have been formed. So now if you look at the structure of the molds very closely, what do you see? They are thread-like structures and on top of these thread-like structures, you have small spherical structures, right? So it, the structures are somewhat like this, correct? Now what are these molds actually? It is rhizopus, right? The fungi. So these thread-like structures on top of which are present these tiny blobs. These blobs are known as sporangia and these sporangia contain spores. And spores are small unicellular bodies which are capable of growing into a new individual. Like as I said, in every organism there are some specialized cells which are capable of growing or which are capable of reproduction. So in these organisms, these spores are the one which are capable of forming a new organism. So let us look at the structure even more in more detail. So this is how it looks like. So these structures are known as sporangia and inside the sporangia you have small unicellular bodies which are called spores. 
Now, otherwise the spores always stay inside this sporangia or inside this covering. So why do they stay inside covering? To protect themselves from unfavorable conditions. Now, whenever these spores come in contact with some moist surface, now moist surface that is watery surface which contains water that is suitable for the formation of new organism. So whenever it comes in contact with moist surface, the outer covering breaks, the spores come out and they begin to grow. So now how are these spores formed? They are formed by repeated division of nuclei. So that, that's very common by division of the nucleus only new organisms are formed. So inside, so it is also a little similar to the multiple fission. In multiple fission also we saw that under unfavorable condition a cyst is formed inside the cyst. The nuclei divides many times and when favorable conditions come the cyst breaks and all the nuclei comes out. So similarly here also this sporangia they act as the cyst. So inside the sporangia the nuclei divides many times to form the spores. So when the favorable condition return here favorable condition is the moist surface. Whenever it comes in contact with the moist surface the thick outer covering breaks and the spores come out and they start growing into new organisms. So these kind of uh, asexual reproduction is seen in many algae, bacteria as well as fungi. So here we have taken the example of rhizopus which is a fungi. Now the question is how are spores dispersed? Since spores are very small bodies, they can be very easily dispersed by wind or water or by insects or small animals. Dispersed means carrying the spores from one place to another. Let us suppose right now the spores are here, but by, with the help of, I mean, if wind blows, it might get carried away to some distant place. And if that distant place has some water nearby or some favorable conditions for the spore to grow, so it can start growing at that place. So the spores can be carried to, since they are small and they can be easily carried, so they are carried to distant places by wind, water or insects and animals. I hope you found this entire series on reproduction or how do organisms reproduce useful. If you have a feedback to share, do let us know in the comment section. If you really like the video, you should share it with your friends so that they can enjoy the video too. I will see you all very soon with a new video with a new topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.